In this video, we'll be setting up a day and night light map configuration, which is an alternative method to the standard Vertex pre-light. If you're on version 2021 or above, for GTA materials to work, set to max legacy and restart 3 DS max. With light mapping, we can utilize UV channel 2 for the light map, which has its own texture separate from our diffuse texture. A disadvantage of using light mapping for your pre-lights is you're only able to assign one light map to your model and this light map will show during both day and night. This means, in order to load our day and night light maps and interpolate between them when day turns to night, we need to use scripting and shaders. Unfortunately, I am able to teach scripting, and so the exact technique to blend or interpolate between the two light maps is something I cannot guide you through in this video. For this video, it is expected that all of your model's materials are of the RW material type. If you are working with a model that you have built yourself, your materials might be of the standard legacy type. These can easily be converted to RW type by following these steps. If your scene has multiple objects, simply link them to any object and export the DFF with the necessary data. Now import the DFF back with explicit normals if you want to retain the original shaded normals. You now have two options. If your models didn't have modifiers and modifier stack before exporting, or you don't care about preserving modifiers, then simply delete the old objects in your scene. If you do want to preserve any modifiers in your modifier stack, which is recommended, then you will need to transfer materials between the two versions. Now that we know how to work with the correct material type, let's get started. Let's import a farmhouse from Flint County. You could as well use your own models for this. It doesn't matter as the configuration can be applied to any scenario. I would like to cast shadows from the house onto the ground. And for this, I will create a grassy plane which will also act as shadow caster. For switching between day and night light configurations in Max, we'll use keyframes. This way, daylighting will be on frame 0 and night will be on frame 1 in our timeline. This is easier than creating extra time dependent lights. For the skylighting, I'll create a daylight system. As I am not using an exposure control in this video, I will need to make do with the manual controls for the daylight system. This also lets me change the angle of the light manually.
You can fine-tune the appearance to your liking, but I would like a warm, sunny look to my daylight scene. I'll make the excuse that there's nobody home at this time of day, and so I won't create any light sources for the house windows. Therefore, the daylighting is now complete. For the night lighting, I want to incorporate some moonlighting, but it needs to create softer shadows, and I would like it angled differently. It's important to do some test renders to see how your shadows turns out. For the shadows, I could set it as shadow map type and use a low resolution, but that doesn't give me much flexibility. I'll instead change the shadow spread and refine the other shadow settings while pressing Shift-Q to iteratively test render. For the global illumination, I'll increase the sky multiplier a little, just so unlit areas aren't pitch black. I would like the house windows to cast light onto the grass and window frames to make it seem like its owners are at home with lights on. For that I'll use spotlights, which is different from omnipoint lights because it lets me choose the direction of the light that is being cast.
the day and night light configurations now look great. Let's bake out our light maps and check how they look. If you haven't already watched the previous video, which covers light map basics, I included steps on how to install the two scripts that we need, Parameter Collector for batch editing material parameters, and Steamroller for batch unwrapping second UV channel. First, use Steamroller to unwrap all the models that you want light mapped. In Render to Texture Rollout, I'll set first, configure the file output type on a random model, as then it will be used for all models that I add lightmap for afterwards. Now, load all intended models and configure your lightmap parameters. If you're noticing excessive noise in the shadows, try tweaking the shadow parameters or just use the shadow map type with a low resolution.
To export to the game, we need to feed the light maps into our RW materials. Then, we need add the correct material settings so that the light map can be blended into the diffuse texture. I forgot to include this in the video. For the light map to work, we need to set the effect type as 5. Export a single model with your desired export settings, as then the batch exporter will inherit the last used settings. Now the last thing we need is to add the light maps to a TXD, and for that, I'll just copy a TXD from the base game and remove its contents. The light map we need to add to the TXD is the ones we baked last. In this case, the last one we baked was the daytime with the D in the end of its name.